Fans, Canes fans, Canes fam, what's going on? What's going on? Hey man, I'm gonna keep this brief. It's early. It's late actually. It's like 1:30 in the morning, but I had shit to do. That game ended several hours ago, but I'm just make a couple of brief comments on it. Um, not to get sidetracked, but man, what about before we get into the Cane, the, the football game, the, the Miami Hurricanes game? How about Old Dominion? I'm talking about one double A JV junior varsity 0 and four in their division Old Dominion upset in Virginia Tech. Wow! Holy smokes, man! And that quarterback dropped about 200 more yards on Virginia Tech's defense than Florida State's starting quarterback did. What does that tell you? Mm. That's crazy, man! Old Dominion. Army almost beat Oklahoma, and whether you're a fan of them or not, that Stanford versus Oregon game was pretty good. Uh, Stanford was supposed to lose that game. They were down. They came back from behind on the road and won. That was a pretty good game, pretty entertaining. Think about the Hurricanes, back to the Hurricanes. Good game. Any win is a good win. Uh, great day to be a Miami Hurricane. I won't take too much of your time, just a couple of points. Miami could have scored more points in that game. They should have scored 56 points in that game, but they scored 31 points, 31-17. But the score is not indicative of the game. The, the game was actually, uh, uh, it wasn't as close as the score indicated. It really wasn't. And the, in the fourth quarter, Mark Rick, he put the second and third string in there, and they just got outplayed by the first team, FIU, by like, they score like they dropped 14 on them in the fourth quarter. So it is what it is, man. But they won. The good thing about that game, though, the good thing about it is that uh, the Cozy Perry, pretty he didn't start, but he played the, the majority of the game. He got the majority of the reps. Man, it's clear that he's the better quarterback. Uh, real quick, I don't really think there's any reason to not have him start next week against UN, UNC. But I think what the issue is, and I, and I may have touched on this before, I, I, I think I think what the problem might be is that Nikosi might not be a great practice quarterback. Like, um, what you call it? I think Rozier, he probably displays better leadership, and he's probably better on the practice field than Nikosi. But practice field don't count on game day when you got a guy who's better than you. So that might be the issue. Or just Coach Rick wanting to live and die with his upperclassmen. I don't know. Um, it's a good game. Turnover chain came out. Congrats to Sheldrick Redwine. He had a great game. The defense, up until like the fourth quarter, the, the defense really played the, the, the ones. The first, the first unit, they shut it down. They shut it down. Okay, look, the defense, they, the defense they've, they've done, they've played pretty good all season. Some bad calls called by the coaching every now and again, but can't. I don't really have much complaints about the defense. It's spot on. Willis and Joe Jackson is obvious. They're trying to get to the NFL. Hopefully, Jaquan Johnson will be ready to go next week when we get into uh, when we when we get into O uh, to ACC play. Um, what else? What else we got going on? What else was with that game? Tyree St. Louis, bruh. I know the starting defensive end for FIU. He's probably from Miami. He's Dade County boy, which means he's probably pretty talented at his position. But you are the starting left tackle for the University of Miami. You cannot be letting somebody from – you cannot allow FIU to work you like they did today. Because there's a couple of times you clearly got beat, and one of them ended up being a strip sack on the Cozy Perry, who could have had a bit more pocket presence on that play. But he's a freshman. He hasn't had nearly the amount of reps that he should have had by this point in game time. So I'm going to get him a slide on that one. But Nikosi Perry actually did make the offensive line look a little better because he's got a little better pocket presence. He's a bit more athletic, and he makes better decisions. The running back core looked pretty good, as it always does. I still think DJ Dallas is the most talented offensive player on the team. Uh, Travis Homer had a hell of a game. Monster run. Monster touchdown run. Um, what you call it? Lingrad looked good. Cameron Davis looked good. They even had Chalk Gray and Robert Burns up in there getting reps. Uh, Jeff Thomas, 
Left the game because he was dehydrated. That's on the coaching staff. That's on the training staff. That's up to you. That's that's what that's a part of being prepared uh, in preparation. That's you know that canopy over that roof doesn't allow any wind to blow through that stadium, and it's already hot and humid there. But you you know you got no business having a player going out there being ill prepared. And now that Amon Richards is gone, and even if Amon Richards is he- was healthy, I think it's kind of clear that. Jeff Thomas is probably the best receiver we got, the most dynamic anyway. Do you really need to have the best, your best offensive weapon out there doing punt and kick returns when you got Mike Harley who runs four threes, 40? And Mike Harley, he had a couple of nice catches today. He had a nice game. Lawrence Cager, again, had some monster catches. And Brevin Jordan, that the Cozy Perry-Brevin Jordan connection, that is going to cause defensive coordinators a lot of problems in the future, man. A lot of problems. Yes. I like what I saw from that. The future is bright. Um, special teams. Coach Hartley, look, you don't put a couple of tight ends in the NFL. You can coach you some tight ends, but you might need to reconsider special teams, man. You might need to find a replacement, somebody who can coach up some special teams and some kickers, man. Because – uh. The special teams, the kicking game particularly, this is going to be an issue. Jeff Thomas, you got guys like Jeff Thomas and Mike Harley back there on the returns. That's great. But the kicking game, it, 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 no, not when, especially when we get deep into ACC play. We start in ACC now. Mm-mm. It's a short week. It's a short week. Like I said, it was a good game. Not a whole lot, you know, except for the fact that we got, as Hurricane fans, what me personally, I've been wanting to see since – the third quarter of the LSU game. And that's Nicozy Perry under center, taking the majority of the reps. So that's what I want. But I won't be surprised if we see Rosier start uh, next week, this Thursday, against North Carolina. And North Carolina, they might not play defense, but they put up some points. They put up some points. So we don't need to be getting off to any slow starts. And I'd rather not take the chance. I mean, Rozier, he saved the program last season. He really did, man. Uh, you know, he probably saved Mark Riggs' job last season with that 10 win streak, but they screwed the pooch at the end of the season. But he was a great stopgap between Brad Kaya and Cozy Perry. But I think it's clear that the, the Cozy Perry era, it needs to begin. It needs to begin like now. It, it began today, me personally. But we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? We'll see. I haven't looked at any of the post-game interviews commentary yet. We'll take a look at it, see what happens. I'll take a look. And uh, I'll probably come back and uh, talk a little bit, talk a little bit about it, you know, Monday or Tuesday. Um, but, you know, I'm also, you know, I'm also a Dolphins fan. You know what I'm saying? So they play, they play them Raiders on Sunday. So I'm, I'm looking to see. I'm not as big as an NFL fan as I am a college football fan, but I, I will watch just a couple of teams out with my home team, Miami. I will watch the Dolphins play, and uh, I will watch you know teams like the Saints. There's a couple of other teams I watch, but I want to see them, them Dolphins beat the Raiders tomorrow. But anyway, back to the Canes. It was a good game. Like I said, it, really the score of that game it should have been it should have been 56 to like seven, man. But I think Rick probably out of respect for Coach Davis, Rick. Didn't run up the score. He played it conservative. You know, he went past the Rick. And um, you could tell Davis was, like, looking at that sideline, like, look at that joker over there on my sideline. I'm supposed to be over there. But it is what it is, man. Um, yeah, now it gets real. We done done playing the junior varsity in the warm-up games. We going into UN, you going to play UNC this week. From here on out, uh, just about every game, Every game on this season counts. I mean, every every game in the season counts, but every game for the rest of the season really counts. And I'm really hoping that LSU continues balling like they're balling because it looked better for us. All right, because right now it ain't looking like anybody beating Bama. And on a final note, excuse me, the ACC looked weak today, man. I'm gonna tell you right now the way the ACC is looking over the past month. I would say the ACC right now is probably the, the third, possibly even the fourth best conference. 
you look at it compared to the SEC. The SEC right now, I hate to say this, but the SEC right now has got like three elite teams, possibly four, and and, and at least three really good teams right now. Uh, Alabama, as usual, Georgia, LSU, and possibly Auburn. And then um, Kentucky, they undefeated. An undefeated in the, an undefeated team in the SEC is saying a lot. Okay, and there's a couple of other teams that aren't exactly slouches. ACC right now, man, it's clear Clemson is the best team in the ACC. And Miami, you really don't know because we've been playing junior varsity the past three weeks. Uh, um, the last game we played against a, a real opponent, we got smoked. And and I'm just hoping that that's just because LSU is as good as everybody thinks they are. And Miami screwed the pooch on a couple of things, but we'll see. Now we're getting into the ACC. We're going going into the fire, so you know what I mean? But but the ACC didn't look good today. L, uh, FSU struggled against Northern Illinois. Tag it forever, baby. Tag it forever. Um, Virginia Tech losing to Old Dominion. And Virginia Tech, mind you, was the second highest ranked team in the ACC was Virginia Tech. And they lost to one double A junior varsity 0-4 in their division, Old Dominion. Mm-mm. UNC, but Boston College got smoked by Purdue. They got water boated. They got motor boated by, uh, by, by uh, boat raced. They got boat raced by Purdue. And uh, let's see, who else? Yeah, UNC played Pitt today, and it's obvious neither one of them teams know what the defense is. And uh, LSU and uh, Louisville, Louisville is everything that you expect them to be without Lamar Jackson. So ACC right now ain't looking so – it's looking weak, man. So it is what it is. We'll see as the season goes on. But uh, that's it. That's all I got to say. I hope you all have a good night. Look. A win is a win is a win. It's a great day to be a Miami Hurricane. Now on to the, to the league. Let's see if we can win this Coastal. Y'all have a good night and have a great weekend.